in this case, we generally call those models, you know, quote unquote hybrid clouds. If you have, say, maybe your database in your backend data center, as we call it backend, is, is, is functionally the uh, lower level technology where you store your data. And you have your front end, which is your web services or your websites sitting perhaps, you know, on the cloud. And that, that's what we call kind of a hybrid cloud model. That's oftentimes uh, it, what's really truly a distributed model where you have some parts and pieces in your span of control, some parts and pieces of your system in someone else's span of control, say Amazon's data center. And oftentimes you're relying on another service outside of your primary system. So say outside of your HR system or outside of your financial system, uh, which is your infrastructure, right? Which is the cloud infrastructure to run that application. So if Amazon goes down, your systems go down, right? So there's in a distributed model, the, the major qualifier that makes it not decentralized can, because they look oftentimes very similar, would be the fact that you are dependent on another piece of service that's external to your particular application. We'll go into these principles in detail, but the idea in the distributed model is you have either uh, a multitude of span of control or you have a singular span of control over a multitude of nodes but you're always reliant on another service and that's that's an important distinction we'll go into the details in a minute now decentralized the core concept here and it can be applied across both technology as well as other things like like i mentioned collaboration models business models etc but for today, we're really going to be focusing on technology models. The decentralized model, uh, as you can see here in the center graph, is basically showing uh, what you know may look rudimentary like a hub and spoke, but in reality, it's not really a hub and smoke. It's it's this idea that you have a particular node. Say you're in the center, you're that center cluster there, and you're connecting to another node, which in, in itself is connecting to a multitude of other nodes. And the idea is your span of control is literally just that node in the center. So you only control the node that runs on your desktop or, or your mobile phone or what have you. And so your span of control over that particular piece of code or, you know, that particular node in a system, uh, is only, is only contained for yourself. And the entire functions of that system are contained within that node. So if you go back to the description where it says, Decentralization is the process of dispersing functions, powers, or people, or things. In this particular case, what we're doing in a technology system is we're saying, well, these functions of the entire system is encapsulated in one node, and it can be replicated a multitude of times. So this provides you scalability, it provides you availability, so you can't, you know, shut the system down, you can't stop the system, etc. So you're dispersing the functions, you're dispersing the span of control of the power to a multitude of nodes that aren't just in your control. They're in your and everyone else's control that participates in the system. So it's an important principle to really understand that decentralization is all about the control factors and not just is this node somewhere else, right? Because if you have in a, say, a perfect distinction in this distributed model, you may have all the characteristics of a decentralized model in a distributed model, except you own all the nodes. And we'll get into some examples, of this, but like Ripple is a perfect example. Ripple owns the majority of the nodes that, that run its system. And so it's, it's much more of a distributed system than it is an actual fully and truly decentralized system, right? Whereas Bitcoin is a truly decentralized system because all of its nodes are owned by a multitude of people which have their own span of control. And then they all contribute to ensure that the system's powers and functions are dispersed and not owned by one entity, right? Part of the consensus algorithm helps with that. 